Today is going to be a little bit of an culmination of a few different things. If you remember, I released this video about this inline seven. And afterwards, I did a bit of research, and it generally tends to be only diesels that actually do this. And the last time I did a tractor, somebody commented on there that they wanted me to do something a little bit bigger. So, I made this ginormous big boy. So what I'm planning to do is put this through automation, and then take this seven cylinder engine and put it into the car when I take it to BMNG and then see what we can do. Now, if you just wanna skip to the more tutorial-y sort of part, there will be timestamps below. Let's first address the biggest issue. The fact that this vehicle is the biggest. Um, like this is fully zoomed out. I can't zoom out any more than that. So like seeing the top can be a little bit tricky sometimes. But with that in mind, we are going to make ourselves just a very, very heavy vehicle. Now I'd love to go ladder, but I want a mid engine. So we're gonna have to go with that for now. I don't actually know what the usual layouts for this. And I know that usually they have rear wheel steering, but I don't wanna be fiddling and futzing around with that today when there's so much other work to do. So instead, we're just gonna stay with front wheel steering and some rear wheel drive goodness. Actually, you know what? Nah, I am, I am gonna cheat. I'm gonna go with a ladder and then I'm gonna move the engine back visually and then I'll do it in BMNG as well. That way I can have solid axle leaf springs all the way around on this behemoth. And then we're gonna drop quality just so it's a little bit heavier. Now we are gonna replicate this as a inline seven, but we're gonna start with an inline six and just add an extra cylinder onto this. And I've also made the engine base ginormous for this. So if you're gonna be taking this out, one which his body has no morphing on there, it will easily fit the biggest of big engines. And we're gonna stick to just a straight up, very simple looking diesel inline engine. Now, because I want this thing to also chug out smoke, we're gonna turn up the fuel mixture all the way up. We're also gonna put an automatic in this because usually these sorts of things are automatics nowadays. I don't know about all of them, but I think that this will be close enough. Go for some good old chunky off-road behemoth tires. And now we're gonna go and fiddle with having the rear tires be a lot smaller. Oops, wrong way. Oh god, this is gonna take a while. Eh. No. Here's one I prepared earlier. <sighs> That should about do it. Go with some good old, oh, I mean, they're, they're gonna struggle, but we're gonna go with some drum brakes because it just feels very agricultural to be so rudimentary. Also, look at the lean on this thing, bro. Go for an off-road skid tray to make this thing super heavy. My God, this thing is 6.8 tons, guys. That is hefty. And I think we can make it heavier. Now to get on to the tricky part, which is making this thing look good. And oh, there are some really big caveats here. One, there's no body morphing. Two, this vehicle is so asymmetrical that there is no like a uh, mirroring really possible most of the time. So never use the mirror function whatsoever. But let's start off by hiding that chassis and lifting that rear suspension up and maybe drop the front down a bit. Good. Now the engine is way too far forwards and also not the right size. So we're gonna fiddle with this a little bit. We're gonna first make the engine scale a lot bigger. Move it backwards. A little bit more backwards. Then move it up. That should about do it. Probably drives the front wheels if I'm actually being honest. Uh, sure, it'll be fine. That drive line though. Anywho, at least we have some fancy paint options. Primary color is gonna be, you know, we, we'll just go a straight red on here. I'm thinking something like an enamel, so I'll go plastic, turn the bumpiness up, and the roughness down a little bit. So it's shiny, but not smooth by any regards. Perfect. Nearly all of this is done already. Like there was not a lot of effort required for this body, if I'm gonna be honest. A little bit tricky to get my head around it first, but I was able to do it. Not really able to exactly do a, a replica of the vehicle, but that's mostly because you don't really have great blueprints available, say like you do for older F1 cars. Now we're gonna run into one of the biggest issues right now and that is trying to place things in certain areas so I wanted to have cutouts for steps and I didn't think about this at all until it was time to do it and you can see that it just doesn't want to place and that's because it's trying to fight to have it here instead of down here and it just becomes a huge 
huge issue. Now, what you can do is potentially just stick it there, then 3D, move it up to where you need the next step to be, then angle this down so then when it tries to project, it doesn't try to project from up here onto it, but from down here onto it, and there you go, you've got yourself a step, but it looks super jank. I, I'm gonna cheat. What I'm gonna do instead is put on little flat plates for people to stand on. Saving time and effort here, I am super duper lazy. Ha! <laughs> And then we're just gonna place them all god like this. That was uh not what I was expecting. My brain just for some reason didn't think that was gonna happen. I can't be bothered measuring out these steps to make sure they're all even, so good luck. I really should just go in and modify this file, shouldn't I? I don't want to! I'm too lazy! And to be honest, I don't know anything about the engines or really anything about this tractor. I just started to model it one day and then I kind of stopped it and I only decided to bring it back to make this seven cylinder video. We can now plop in some interior, I reckon. I was gonna just pick that as the wrong sort of seat. We'll just go the good old cheap seat. Perfect for this sort of thing. I wonder what sort of steering wheel. Probably gonna go with something straight vertical. What looks very uh, tractor-esque. I mean, this kind of looks like it might belong in some sort of 70s tractor. So let's go ahead and plop you in. This is gonna be one of the silliest builds I have ever done. I suppose that'll do for the steering wheel. What else do we want? I suppose... Hmm, what goes on top? I think that's uh, to offshoot the picked up grain maybe? And typing top into the search bar? Yeah, it hasn't really netted me any better results. So what I'm gonna do is just basically put out a pipe and then a black box on the end, maybe? I don't know. I think we'll choose this, make it super big, and then we'll grab that like shoot thing that goes to the other side. I wonder, hold on. I think I might be better served with like maybe a vent because this has like a good lip on it, all that sort of stuff. And I think it'll uh, fit what I'm trying to do a little bit better. And then what you got is this uh, lovely little kind of indentation sort of thing. I know it's a little bit hard to explain. And I think being hollow there really does benefit us quite nicely. Now, if you know what this is called, I don't care. I'm just going to call it the grain offloady thing. Now, this is what happens if you try to make things bigger. Yeah, lots and lots of mess. I could have maybe done a better unwrap, but I also couldn't have cared less. Just have fun with it. Don't complain to me. And with only a few little details, this is really starting to come together and make it look as if it's actually not meant to be completely hideous. Totally unlike what I was actually intending to have. Now, we're not gonna put on the full thing on the front. What I'm gonna do instead is make something that is basically a substitute. So we're gonna start by grabbing a triangle, super simple geometry, and then make it really, really big. And then luckily because we have some bike mod stuff that's really not normally meant for this sort of application, we're gonna cheat and we're gonna use that to give it all of the extra detail without having to put in a huge amount of effort. Not about working harder, it's about working smarter. And I think that's all good. Are we ready to send this over to BMNG already? I think. We pretty much are. Now, the thing is, is also very underpowered, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right now, I want to see what it's like over on the uh, test track. Oh, this is taking a long time. Oh no, what do we got? Strong oversteer. Re yeah, I don't have a lot of power because the thing is incredibly flooded. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 30 minutes at this rate. Oh no, only 10. It's a veritable Lamborghini of tractors. Wait, no. Lamborghini is the Lamborghini of tractors. Here goes nothing. Oh, please work. It's taking its time. And do we have steering? Yes, we do. Do we have driving? We do. And it is as slow as I would have hoped. Oh, this is fantastic. I would like to have the rear wheel steer, but I'm just, I can't be bothered setting that up, bro. This is, yeah, this is actually quite good as it is but I want to go like stupid engine time and I can't do that with the body on it. Oh, this thing is working out. It's, it's cooking itself. It's hot. I don't know why it should actually be running super cool. This is very unusual. All right, let's bring it to a stop. 
Oh, those brakes are weak. First things to do is we're going to do a little bit of modification to the engine, and it's not going to be easy. First, we unpack our mod, bring it into Blender, and select everything else but the engine and delete it. And then we're going to have to do some little finagling. Now, the front and the backs of the engines are unique. So what we're going to have to do is grab like cylinder bank number two or three or something like that, and then shift everything along. And this is going to take a really long time. So I'm going to maybe time lapse this. And yeah, I am going to be making mistakes. So just ignore that. So what we're doing here is duplicating the engine, deleting everything around the cylinder in which we want to copy. Then on the original, what we're going to do is grab the final cylinder or two, however many you want. We're going to stretch them out and then move the new cylinder into that section, shorten up the uh, extended section now, and then remove all of the extra material stuff that you don't need. So basically what we'll be doing is adding a little bit of ribbing and manifold stuff and uh, little tidbits here and there to the rest of it. And it ends up being rather clean. Well, you know what? That wasn't actually that big of a deal. Now what we're going to do is select these two, join them, go in here, and this is going to be uh, 7CYL. We'll just call it that. And then we're going to have to rename all of these over in the materials file because this is going to chop them all off. Luckily, I have a, a slight uh, shortening of this process. We're going to grab the first material, copy the name of it, go into here, go Control F, Control V. We found it. Now we know where we cut this off, which is just at the underscore I-N-L. Now, because in this particular program, all uh, formatting of letters and everything is all consistent spaces, I don't need to search anymore. All I have to do is just delete everything that corresponds to the same length, because that's where it cuts it off and it's tedious work. It's the only way I know how. Oh, okay, save that. Go into the engine me oh engine structure, I think. And then I believe flex bodies are in here somewhere. And this is now just going to be called this 7CYL. CYL. Save on that. I suppose I also forgot to show how to export this. So you would export it as a DAE. You'd send it back to where it was. Oh, I hadn't actually exported yet. You can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it 7CYL. Something that won't conflict with other names and other mods. Selection only. Export clutter. And back over to BeamNG now, we have one, two, three, three, four, five, six. If we hit control R, it will show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We now have our lovely and glorious seven cylinder mesh in here. Now this is where things get a little bit complicated and we're gonna require a lot more rudimentary thinking. I haven't actually done this myself. I just know vaguely, I reckon I know how to do the process sort of thing. So what we're gonna do is start by closing this off. We're gonna open up said engine sim and you know what, we're just gonna listen to it. I got this all working by the way. So this now will idle eventually, but it'll only idle at like a really low RPM and any sort of like a stresses on it. Like even if I just uh, rev it a little bit, It'll often stall afterwards. And oh my God, bro, I love this thing so much. It is so jank. I know I should go with like the better seven cylinder, but I just, I don't want to. Getting it started is also like a real hassle. Now, this is where all of these key bindings come into play. I'll just tell you what I will be using as I use it. First, we're gonna turn it on. Then, oh, no, we're gonna turn it on. There we go. Yeah, once it starts decelerating, it doesn't want to stop decelerating. Then what we're going to do is put the dyno on with D and then put H on with hold. And now we see that the power with zero throttle at a thousand RPM is uh, minus 15 foot pounds and minus three horsepower, which means the engine will be slowing down because it's not at idle at rest. It'll want to do that. Now, if I was to open this throttle up to 100%, the actual power it's generating is about 70 and 300 and I can't really tell, we'll have to slow it down. I'm going to press five to slow the time down about 
770 foot-pounds of torque. So we're just gonna turn that off ever so quickly. Editor Phil interjecting here. Apparently, if you go into this file directory, edit any of these themes that you want, you can put in the actual uh, Newton meters unit output and it'll actually give you that. And that is important because BeamNG takes all the inputs as Newton meters and not as foot-pounds. I, however, in this process convert them and I learned this afterwards from Anj himself. We're gonna open up the main engine J-beam and we're gonna start putting these numbers in here. I believe the torque though is in Newton meters and not foot-pounds. So we're gonna have to start putting the numbers in one by one and the way we can do this is let me just quickly show you we're gonna turn on the engine H and then we can change the RPM with G but we can only go down to a uh, to a thousand RPM unfortunately but with full throttle at 1000 RPM we're getting unusual numbers. It reckons we got over a thousand foot-pounds a talk. Um, you know what it is? It's probably we're on the power stroke, so not on the power stroke. It's gonna come down considerably, and you could change the times by holding the one, two, three, and four keys. So we're down to no power right now because it's on the compression strokes of all of them. And we're oh, are we detonating? No, no, we're starting to power on now. And our power number is all the way up to 800, 900. Okay, about a thousand. So what I think we'll do is we'll actually go somewhere in between. We'll go 500 Newton, uh, 500 foot pound. It's about 677 Newton meters. So we're just gonna start off with 677 and we're gonna get rid of the ones we don't need because we're only gonna go with 1500 increments. Maybe we'll actually set the proper one to 677 and this thing doesn't like to idle really low. So we're gonna put this down to say something like uh, 200 maybe and hope that this thing goes up. So we're gonna get rid of everything in between the major numbers here and we're gonna allow it to extrapolate every, or interpolate I suppose the number would be, every number in between. Okay. I uh, did a little bit of a time lapse there to show you what happens and it very quickly drops off. We got our power curve now and the idle is very rough. Also probably gonna drop the idle down to about 500. We won't be able to get quite the 500 sort of idle but we're gonna try and what we're gonna do is use a program called Audacity now. All right, well, what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna stop recording, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do and the tricks behind it. So we're gonna turn it on, then we're gonna go to hold engine, get it to go to an incremental rev. Now, this is not on power. If I hold the throttle open, it is now under load. So grab a sound bite of this and a sound bite of this, then go up like an increment. Hold on, didn't mean to zoom in. Then you got off power and on power. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab those and then I'll be back in a minute. Now, what I'm doing is I've got myself my files in here that I've done the audio recording for. I did little bits of each. I grabbed a default audio file sound from the one that we already had. So I kind of know the length. And to start off the file, you really should start at the beginning of a pulse or just before, I don't know, probably just on the beginning of a pulse should do it justice. And then I've gone through, I'm at 1000 RPM now. I'm starting 1000 on load. We're going to take all of these and then we're going to export all of the audio files individually, not in a timeline like this, uh, for each individual part. I'm not going to record this because I want my computer to be able to deal with this at a decent sort of uh, am amount of time. This will take a long time to fiddle through. So I gently cut them all up. As you can see here, they are in their own individual parts. I don't have, unfortunately, idle on power, but we've got the rest of them. We put them all into their own little timelines and then we exported them all and I've put them all in a little folder here. Now what we have to do is go into our blend files and then these are gonna call upon all of these names. First thing is we're gonna change all of this to 7CYL because that is the name of this file here and replace all of them, 45 of them. Now we only need uh, incremental ones. The only thing that really particularly matters here for format is when removing the ones we don't need, make sure that the very last one doesn't have a comma. Aside from that, we're pretty good here. This will just be like 
803, you know what, that's absolutely fine. Now, what we're gonna do is call this idle. Unfortunately, we won't have an off sound, so we'll just get rid of that one altogether when it gets around to it. We're just gonna go ahead and create all of the on samples though. Wait, hold on. Wait, which one is which? Let's have a quick listen. 803 and 803p. Yeah, so P means on power. I don't have the hugest amount of experience with this side. I just go ahead and fiddle with things usually and delay work. So this one is going to be the off power section. So it's going to be 1K off because that's the name that I went with and keep duplicating it for each one of them. You can go with any nomenclature that you want though. It doesn't really matter. And as long as the last one doesn't have a comma at the end, we're all good. Now let's do the same except over here. Hey, look at that, I did a little bit of a cheat. So I had these selected and then told it to find all offs in this area and change it to on. And that made everything the right name. So we're gonna save this. Now we're gonna reopen up BeamNG. And if we don't suck, hopefully this will now have the sounds that we want. Oh yes, I think that's right. Well, it's not great, I'm not gonna lie. Kinda sounds a little bit like garbage, but we do have the sounds in there. And I believe we have the right power band as well. Oh, this sounds like garbage. So, <laughs> it's not perfect. You will have to do a lot of uh, fiddling with things yourself. Uh, if you're actually in the program, you'll actually have all these extra controls you can play with. So, Z is just for volume, we don't care about that. But we got X. So you can fiddle with things there. You've got C. And change that. You, you've got a lot here to change with if you wanted to create a very specific sort of thing. You know what? I do want to lower the idle though. Wait, I don't think I ever saved the power band. Let's go ahead and save that. What happens over here? It's very quiet. Yeah, it still sounds very jank. That's not really the issue. Uh, let's go ahead and change this idle down to like 300. See what happens. Hopefully it won't stall. Well, it's not great, as you can imagine. Uh, let's see how it does at farm work. We have massive uh, tractor tires on here. I, this is... Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put an exhaust stack on. Oh, poo. Well, that's fine. We'll fiddle this out another time. My god, this thing is super duper bouncy. I suppose you're meant to be running with the lines, though. This is not the worst audio I've ever heard, but it's also not great. I feel as if... Like, the idle sounds great, does it not? It's just when you start getting into power... Something doesn't quite sound right. So, I found two issues with what I'd done. One, I'd forgotten to put in the target RPMs, which would start playing the audio at. And two, the minimum load gain, and uh, some of these were set a little too low. Now, sounds a lot better. So, we got zero RPM, uh, sorry, like an idle RPM. And we have different sounds for on power and off power. Yay! We have done it! Now all I need to do is delete all that and re-export it all now with an exhaust stack on it. Oh, damn it. We're still overheating? What the hell? Oh, we also need better brakes! Oh, that sucks. Okay, our radiator size is only... I believe this is in square meters. Three square meters is not, like, giant for a big vehicle. Maybe put this to five. Coolant volume is very high. This is rounded off, though. I hate having, like, massive decimal points. Uh, missing a comma? Wait, why is there a comma missing? That's weird. Let's put a comma there and see if that's gonna break anything. No, everything looks fine. And if we push the thing really hard, look at that. Temperature's up immediately. But at least, you know what? I think it was the fan not working. I think I might have accidentally uh, messed up the fans. How about turning off lockers on these vehicles is usually really bad. So let's see, turning it on. Oh, okay. Finally, we've created one of these vehicles where putting on the lockers doesn't actually cause massive issues. Slow down. Oh my god, it's so bad. I mean, the simplest option for our brake problem is to turn our brake power all the way up. Now, when we accelerate, and hard brake. I mean, it's not good, but it's a lot better. This is, this is a fun vehicle. 
I'd rather do enjoy this. Let's bring out a normal vehicle to see it side by side. Let's do this Top Gear style. This is a big vehicle. And this is a giant vehicle. Now, this one may have a lot more power and a lot more torque than this thing, but only on paper. Its effective usability is not particularly great. See this one? We accelerate. Look, we go. Ours, on the other hand. Look, we... I'm maxing out already. I do like the idea though that we're finally in a vehicle where it has like a realistic top speed and it's about 50-ish kilometers an hour, which is pretty darn good. Let's see how this thing does at hill climbing because we got big beefy off-road tires right now, but can it climb unusually tall mountain hilly areas? No, not even close actually. Wow, that's struggling super bad. What the hell? I mean, I know it's heavy. You know what? It is actually really heavy. What is the weight in BeamNG? 7.6 tons. Oh my god. And trying to put that through something like this? Hmm. Let's go in and try changing maybe our tire pressure. Oh, our tire pressures are really high. So let's change our rears down to like 14s. There'll be big floppy sacks of air right about now. All good with our floppy sacks of air. We're able to move up the hill slowly, but surely we're actually getting it. Wow. That's surprising. I thought this thing was just not going to be able to do it. What's Okay, we're overheating. Spoke maybe a smidgen too soon. Let's... Can we make it over? No, I was hoping that the front tires would be big enough. Since we're on the Italian map, I just wanted to show this red vehicle next to an Italian red vehicle, just to give you a gauge of size. This is a 1961, I believe, Ferrari that I made. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to show how big this thing was. It is so much... Oh, wait, hold on. I just realized that I might not actually be able to... Oh... You know what? I was thinking of a nice cinematic place to start driving from. What I didn't think is that I wouldn't be able to actually get through. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to manually move me around. Yeah, no, nah, there is no way out of there. Let's take us to a, uh, a more appropriate sort of area. Anyway, we got some farmlands. Uh, you know what really sucks is being behind a tractor that is going super duper slow. So let's turn our graphics down to normal and let's try bringing out some AI and let's do normal tractor things, which is slow down a lot of traffic. Uh, nobody's coming up behind me, which is a bit disappointing. That is where I would like to see most of the traffic coming from. So then I can like properly slow them down. Oh, no, have to watch out for going off the road. Slow all you guys down. You know what? You need to slow down more. I wonder. Hold on. I do have a very big wheel. I know you're not a small... Okay. Maybe we'll wait for something like a Civetta. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh, no. It feels like maybe our collision mesh... Yeah, our collision mesh is not great, unfortunately. Bugger. I would have loved to have done that. Are you beeping your horn at me? How rude. Let me hit you with my invisible, invisible mesh. There you go. Take that. I seem to be stuck on you. Uh, why is there no traffic coming from behind? They're all coming from ahead. What if I drive like this? Will they all spawn ahead of me now? Like behind me now? Where are they? Can you guys show up at any time, please? Ugh, really? Well, it looks like nobody's spawning now because they're all caught in that traffic jam down there. Well, Ange, you remember that inline seven that I made? Uh, sorry, that you made technically for me. The one that I requested of you. Uh, yeah, I do remember actually. Yep, well, I've put it in a vehicle. Okay. It's uh, quite a big, hefty behemoth here. I've remodeled an automation engine to be seven cylinders. It's got the power graph and the sounds. And okay, that's, that's uh, interesting. Interesting vehicle you've chosen there, but. I mean, I wanted to try something a bit different. And when I looked at i7s, it turns out that most of them were all diesels, only one being for a motorbike. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember looking that up, actually. There, there have been some inline sevens, but I, I don't yeah. think it's been implemented for gasoline engines. Remember how we were talking about the i7s don't sound particularly great? I do recall, yeah. I'm going to say that I reckon this sounds a little bit better in BeamNG. Actually, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good, actually. Oh, and yeah. We got the sound upwards and the overrun. And uh, nice. because oh, of... So you, you, 
So you did do the, the engine overrunning? Yeah, I did the uh, things that you suggested and bra. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this. I'm gonna be making so many different engines. I've currently made uh. an engine, but it's extremely gutless. So I'm gonna have to be looking into why that one's gutless. And that's probably gonna be my next project. And I'm probably okay. going to do that one next week as well. I think the only final thing left to do is to take it through Phil Hill whilst thanking my channel members. You guys are the reason why I can uh, make this sort of stuff and dream of one day being able to support myself with my YouTube addiction. I mean, a uh, uh, job, potentially? I don't know what you want to call it. It's something I enjoy. I don't enjoy editing, but the rest of it I do enjoy. Maybe you guys will be the ones to support me eventually to be able to hire an editor. I don't want to over my engine. Let's slow down a smidge. Uh, but yes, yeah, special thanks to the full Filman86 member uh, experience people. I don't know. I really gotta come up with better names for my membership plans. But uh, yes, that would be Ruben and De Hellerman. Thank you both for being absolute awesome and uh, supporting me through this uh, fledgling age of my channel. If you guys do have suggestions for things, you can put it down, whether I listen or not. I'm very stubborn. Uh, you can put them in the comments. I am thinking I'm gonna do some more engine stuff. I have a really good one in the works right now. I'm just kind of troubleshooting it. It's all working. Everything's good on this particular engine, but for some reason it's creating piddle all power and it just won't actually uh, do what I need it to do. Oh God, it, we're struggling uphill. Apparently the six tons is overcoming our like half of 1000 uh, Newton meters of torque, which is only happening on half the strokes. I mean, which would, it would even out. Oh, God. <laughs> I just love it in this sort of orientation. I just want to ask one thing. Uh, we'll quickly pause. Why is this here? This only just showed up. Wait, is it because I accidentally pressed Control U? Well, uh, I, I do know how to get rid of it. I can hit Control L, but that will reset everything. And I don't want to do that. So we'll just keep going with what we got. And uh, it's slowing down 36 kilometers an hour now. This is about what you'd uh, probably expect a top speed of this thing to be. You probably wouldn't see this go over like 40 kilometers an hour in real life. And uh, by doing this, I can kind of see why they're not, uh, they're just, they're just not fast. I don't know how accurate this is, but it feels like it's pretty darn accurate. If we were to give it more torque, it'd be more low end torque anyway. So, I mean, hmm. I don't know, bro. Let's just time warp this to the end. This is a really slow, long lap. This is meant to take like a minute, this lap, and we're like two and a half by now. Well, that was that. Actually, there was one thing I haven't done yet, and that's to try crash testing it. So, but, ow. That was pretty much top speed as well. And, oh, that is not, Ooh, that's not as pretty as what you would like out of a collision. You probably would have gone through said window as well. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Mm, goodbye.